Hello, I'm Laura Zaffarelli, a nurse practitioner here in Dr. Craig's office. I'm here to get you ready for your tissue transfer with deep flap reconstruction. From preoperative procedures to postoperative care, we're going to walk you through the process and make sure you're comfortable and informed about each step. So what exactly is this procedure about? What's a fat transfer with deep flap? It's a type of breast reconstruction where blood vessels found in the abdomen called the deep inferior epigastric perforators that's where the deep comes from, are transferred to the chest. The blood vessels are transferred to the chest, the abdominal muscles stay behind, the skin, the fat tissue, and blood supply are transplanted to the chest to reconstruct the breast. But before anything happens, we first have to make sure you're healthy enough to undergo this surgery. That includes a physical within 30 days of surgery, lab work within three months, and an EKG completed within the last six months. Also, a CT angiogram will be ordered to assess the quality of the abdominal blood vessels, which will be transplanted to the breast. This is a very unique surgery that can last between 8 to 12 hours, so we have to make sure that you're the right candidate and that you have the support you will need after surgery. Once that's determined, there are some pre-admission instructions we need to review. You will receive a call one to two days prior to your scheduled surgery, and the pre-surgical coordinator will explain the following surgical start time and when you need to arrive to the hospital and where you need to go when you arrive. You will need a ride to and from the hospital. You'll need to bring your license and your insurance card to check in, leave all your valuables at home, don't eat or drink after midnight. If you take daily medications, you may take them with sips of water on the morning of your surgery. We want the outcome of your surgery to be a success. That means preparation. There are certain medications to avoid prior to surgery. Let's take a look. Stop all vitamins and herbal medicines one week prior to your surgery and discontinue for one week after surgery. Stop taking estrogen modulators one week prior to surgery and discontinue one month after surgery to avoid blood clotting risk. Stop taking oral steroid medicines. They can cause delays in healing. No caffeine one week prior to surgery and one week after. Lastly, do not smoke or be around secondhand smoke for one month after surgery. Your best bet Try quitting altogether. It's surgery day now. Now certainly you'll expect some jitters, but know you're making an informed decision and you're in the most competent of hands. Let's review what happens after the procedure. Some do's and don'ts. We'll start with the don'ts. Do not overstretch your abdomen for 72 hours. It's best to be in a beach chair position with a pillow under your knees to relieve pressure. Do not shower for 48 hours. Then remove the dressing to your abdomen and shower with your back to the shower for one week. Do not lift more than eight pounds for six weeks. Do not sleep on your sides or stomach for six weeks. Do not rub or scratch your incisions. Do not put heat or ice on your breasts. Do not drive while on narcotic pain medicines or muscle relaxants. Do not apply excess pressure to your breasts or your abdomen for six weeks. Do stand tall after 72 hours when walking. Do take medications as prescribed. Do purchase post-operative garments and when indicated, do wear the post-surgical garments at all times. Remove the garment at night prior to bedtime. That includes the bra and the Spanx. When indicated, do shower normally and wash incisions twice daily. This is after the first post-operative visit. Do record drainage output. Do sleep on your back for six weeks. Do walk, climb stairs, light exercise, all is acceptable. Do report an increase in breast pain, swelling, sudden bloody drainage from your incisions or your drains, or fevers over 100.3. Do report color or temperature changes in the breast area. Do drink plenty of water and eat good, nutritious food for better recovery. Now it's important to be prepared for your surgery, and that means having proper supplies on hand prior to your procedure. All medications will be sent to your pharmacy after your preoperative visit, Here's what you need to expect for medications and wound supplies. An antibiotic, five to seven days, twice daily to prevent infection. Pain medication to control post-operative pain. An anti-inflammatory to control pain from swelling. A muscle relaxant to control muscle spasms. An anticoagulant, which is an injection that needs to be injected once daily for 30 days. A stool softener, and laxatives to control constipation. These are over the counter. The rest of the medications discussed are all prescribed and will be sent to your pharmacy for pickup. 
Additional supplies include bacitracin ointment, neosporin, triple antibiotic ointment, or aquaphor. Gauze pads for wound cleaning, saline solution or a wound wash spray for wound cleansing, paper tape to secure the dressings, and band-aids for drain site covering. For a speedy recovery, you'll need to purchase post-operative garments, including a bra and abdominal compression. There are different varieties and we'll discuss further at your first preoperative appointment together. You have your supplies, you did great during your surgery, now here's what you can expect directly after. Your breasts will not be wrapped in a surgical dressing, but your abdominal incisions and belly button will be covered. Expect to have a thick layer of white or clear cream over your breast to promote wound healing. Cover with a gauze. Here are some useful tips. Wear clothing you don't mind getting messy. Loose nightgowns, sundresses are all recommended while you're healing. No need for pants or underwear, just avoid that extra pressure on the abdomen. We don't want any wounds to reopen or have any trouble. After surgery, you'll be well aware that drains have been secured to you to remove excess fluid during the healing process. You'll have to keep track of how much drainage is accumulating. These are the drains. They are typically secured with a stitch to the sides of each breast and both sides of your abdomen. You're most likely going to notice bloody drainage for around 48 hours. That turns to a diluted yellow straw-like drainage, which by the way, you need to keep track of. You will empty the drains twice a day or when they're full. Empty the drains into a cup like this, which will be provided. Mark down the amount of liquid of your drainage on the drainage record chart. And that's it. Be sure to milk the drains like this to keep them clean and to prevent clogging. I understand it's not the most comfortable thing to be attached to drains, but it is necessary to drain excess fluid that might build up after surgery. Do everyone a favor, including yourself, and keep them in place until removed by your provider. We'll be seeing a lot of each other to track your progress after surgery. One week post-op, you'll meet with me, and then again, once the remaining drains are ready to be removed. You will see Dr. Craig at four to six weeks after surgery to check in and see if any surgical revisions are necessary. Then, after six months, you'll be back in our office to check the final stages of swelling. After that, it's only as needed. And those are the basics of what to expect after a fat transfer with deep flap reconstruction. If you have any questions or concerns, please reach out to our office and we'll be happy to assist you. You're going to do great.